Hello everybody, welcome to a proper grizzly tale from Seam. Love Seam, always have. Lovely people, hard as nails, our kind of folk. And this little tiny beach, synonymous with one of the great ghost stories. I want to tell you the story of a man called Jack. Now, this guy was a bit of a ladies' man. He used to love doing all of that chasing after women and trying his best to uh, win them over and have some nice sex right here on Seam Beach. Not just on this one, but the sand dunes further up as well. Because of the way he talked to women, they called him Slavery Jack. Now, in the Northeast, especially if you don't happen to come from the Northeast, in the Northeast, if you call women certain names, and in the Northeast, we're very keen on calling people hello pet hello darling hello sweetheart hello angel all of that that's kind of grist to the mill here in the north that's how we talk but if you go back to when slavery jack was about we're talking late 1800s early 1900s for him to go up and call a complete stranger my darling buttercup my sweetest precious poppet you can imagine Apart from me spitting at the camera, you can imagine just what people thought of him. What a slaver he is. So his name was Slavery Jack. However, one day he was in Seam Town, when it was old, ye oldy Seam Town, and he went into a tavern and he met a woman called Beatrice Robinson. Now Beatrice, beautiful, beautiful woman, and he fell in love with her. And from that moment on, women, other women, don't forget it, he was loyal, steadfast and true to Beatrice, but he was a slaver. He was also a sailor. Put those two things together, a nightmare for any potential father-in-law. He would want somebody that was land-bound, prepared to work hard on land to make a living for his daughter. Not some of these fly-by-nights who'd be on a ship for six to eight months a year. So... Jack sailed everywhere. He went off to the Pacific Ocean where he saw natives doing all kinds of different things. We'll come to that later. He also went down to Africa a lot. He was a, a very successful seaman. He, he was a bosun on a couple of ships. However, he went up to see Mr. Robinson and he even suggested, well, why don't you give me a job on shore? If you give me a job on shore, then I can marry your daughter. We can live happily ever after and I'll be here. Mr. Robinson didn't like him. In fact, took an adverse dislike to him. He had a reputation and for him to come into the house and talk to Mr. Robinson's wife by saying, where is my darling, gorgeous baby? And where is my honey? Where is my lamb? Oh, he thought he was a right slaver. Didn't want anything to do with him. And that's where this pier comes in. Have a look at it. At the present moment, you've got people on the pier fishing and you've got people on the beach. So why is this the most haunted area of Seam? So month after month after month, he courted Beatrice and they were having a great time together. She loved him to bits. They couldn't get enough of one another. Uh, anywhere he went when he was home, Beatrice would be with him. So he went to sea. He came back and he went up to Mr. Robinson and he said, I'm going to marry your daughter. Mr. Robinson said, no, you're not. Forget it. I'm going to lock her up. She's going nowhere, especially not with you. So when his ship was due to sail, Slavery Jack, he decided he was going to sneak Beatrice on board the ship. And this he did in the middle of the night. They snuck away. They got on the ship. Now, this is where certain phrases that we use every day come into parlance. You know the phrase, show a leg? You know when you're saying, somebody get out of bed. Come on now, show a leg. Well, that was an old sailing expression because sailors regularly try to get, usually prostitutes or girlfriends and wives, on board ship. And the only way that a bosun could find out whether there was a woman there, a sure leg, and she'd stick her leg over the end, and if it was a man's leg, that's all right. If it was a woman's leg, get off me boat. They didn't do this with Beatrice. Beatrice managed to get away with him. And the ship, that time, was sailing down to Africa, and it did. 
and they got married on board. A captain by the name of McNulty married them on board the ship and they were very, very happy about it, knowing that when they came back to see him, there's nothing that her father could do to stop them. They were already married. Now, this is when disaster struck because Beatrice in Africa, on shore leave, contracted a nasty kind of pneumonia that clung to the lungs and it ended up killing her. So, Slavery Jack then returned here to see him. The boat pulls into the harbour. Off he gets and he's terrified. He doesn't know what he's going to do because, let's face it, Mr Robinson hates him already and now what he's got to tell Mr Robinson is, I'm sorry but your daughter died. We got married. I'm your son-in-law but your daughter's dead. Now, that's a horrific story to tell anybody. So he tried avoiding him. Now, the story goes into two different paths at this point. Some say Slavery Jack then went back to say, da -de -da -de -da -de -da, didn't see Mr. Robinson ever again. Oh, that's one story. That cannot be corroborated. The one that can be corroborated is Slavery Jack came back and he started living in Seam Town again. So it was only a matter of time before Mr. Robinson was going to bump into him. And eventually they did. And they had a real nasty shouting match. But Jack had seen some things the week that he was in Africa that had turned his head. He'd just lost his wife. He was going crazy with misery for he'd lost the only woman that he truly loved. And while he was in Africa, he witnessed human cannibalism, a tribe in Africa that literally baked one of their enemies and then feasted on it. And he'd witnessed this. And this is only in the early 1900s. It wasn't that far away. But they ate this human being and Jack had a slice or two it was said from the thigh of this man. He witnessed all kinds of horrific practices. So when he got back, his head was not where it should be. He'd lost his great love. He didn't want to live himself. So he went to see Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson, all the while, before he knew that his daughter was dead, used to come here to see him harbour. And on the headland, just behind the car park here, which I, I think we can get a shot of, if you look up there, every night that Beatrice was away, Mr. Robinson came to that headland and he stood there and he watched and he waited and he prayed for his beloved daughter to come home. That is the headland. Now it's said that his spirit walks across this headland and if, if you go up there, you can feel his misery. Some people have been up there and suddenly they've felt terrifying, terrifying feelings of wanting to leap off into the sea. And Mr. Robinson had had a heart attack and he still came down every night to see if Beatrice was coming back. And he would stand on the headland holding a lantern. And some people have said that when they come here, sometimes they'll park up and there'll be a light moving along the top of that headland. And it's said to be him. However, that's not where the story ends. Oh, no, 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 no. Because Jack was now hating Mr. Robinson because essentially Mr. Robinson had stopped him being happy here in Seam. He was quite happy to give up the sea. He wanted to work for Mr. Robinson and live a happy life with Beatrice. But it was Robinson who had inadvertently forced him back out to sea. Just notice there's people actually in the water. They are insane. However, because it's a really cool day, uh, they'd forced him, Robinson had forced him to go back to sea. He didn't want to. And because of that, Beatrice fell ill. Because of that, Beatrice died. Because of that, he hasn't got the man, he hasn't got the woman, rather, that he loved. And it was all Robinson's fault. In Jack's head, it was all his fault. So knowing that he came up to the headland, one day, Slavery Jack waited for him. And it was a cold night, said to be in October. He was on the headland, with, with his lantern. He knew by this time that Beatrice was dead, but he still came, not wanting to believe the fact 
that his daughter was gone. So he would come here. Some say that he met Beatrice's ghost on the hillside. Sounds a bit flowery, who knows? But I'll tell you what did happen up here. Slavery Jack decided he was gonna revenge himself on Robinson. And he got hold of him and he slid his throat and he dragged his body down to his camp on the beach. Funnily enough, not far from where that little metal cage is over yon side. I know that we've got little babas playing at the present moment, but there's a tiny little alcove there and it's said that down by the harbour wall where the metal gate is, he slit Robinson's throat and he sat him down and because it was in the middle of the night, he lit a bonfire and he started skinning his body taking off the flesh from the arms, taking the flesh from the thighs, burning the man's clothes and all his belongings on the fire. And when all the meat was carved off the bones, he ate it. And he ate as much as he possibly could. It's said that especially he cooked and liked the offal, the kidneys, the heart, the liver. And he ate it on the beach here in Siam. Now, Slavery Jack, what happened to him? Was he ever prosecuted for killing him? No, Robinson was never seen again. It's thought that he chucked his bones in the sea and the tide would have them away and if there was any flesh left on them, the crabs, seagulls, fish, they'd have that away. So the bones went, he had piles of meat in his backpack and off he went, Slavery Jack. Not going to sea again, he lived the rest of his life here in Siam. And the interesting side story that makes this sound true is that about eight months afterwards, a local hospital reported that a man had traveled into the hospital with a long white beard, a seaman because he had self-made tattoos on both his arms. And he asked the people there if he could have the limbs of people who needed to have an amputation. One of his friends had actually had to have half, half his arm removed. And he asked, could he have the arm? And if anybody ever has a leg removed, could I have the leg, please? And it's thought that Slavery Jack, driven mad, had gathered a feel and a taste for human flesh. And even though he couldn't get it legally through the hospitals, it said that he travelled this whole area and whenever anybody disappeared or whenever anybody suddenly didn't return home that night, a lot of people said that was Slavery Jack. And there's a rhyme that goes around the Northeast to this day all about Slavery Jack. Let me tell it to you. Old Slavery Jack took a braid. She took a fit and sadly died. Her father waited and he cried until War Jack took him inside. He soon cured the old man's pains. He ate his liver and stewed his brains. And you can hear him screaming down leafy lanes as Slavery Jack scrapes doing the stains. His ghost said to be here too. Slavery Jack pushing people down the steps leading down to the beach. Walking along the pier. And of course, with old man Robinson him creeping behind his spirit up on the headland. And that's the first of some of our grisly tales of Northumbria. We got more to come right here.